In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built a marketing strategy for one of our companies from scratch. Stay tuned. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through this marketing strategy that we're using to rebuild and revamp and relaunch one of the companies in our portfolio, Coding is for Losers. Now, I know you guys usually see my stuff for SEO and I'm tired of being pigeonholed because I can do so much more. No, I'm kidding. We're stuck in quarantine. You can probably tell by my haircut that I haven't gotten cut in a week and uh, I'm a little bit self-conscious about it. So if I see any comments about my haircut, you're getting the band hammer. No questions asked. No, I'm just kidding. Feel free to poke fun. I can take it. Anyways, got off topic here. This video series is going to be talking about how we're, like I said, rebuilding, revamping this entire company. Because when I bought into the company about a year ago, the owner, David Krevit, who's now my partner across all of our companies, uh, was running this part training, part consultancy, part building some software in the background. And uh, we wanted to team up to use my skill set to bring the marketing edge to it to really grow this thing and scale it as quickly as possible because he has such an amazing skill set and the software that he's been building is so amazing. Uh, it just needs a little bit of an extra push from the marketing point of view. So I started working on this a couple of months ago uh, with more of my time and attention. I've been able to put the blueprint uh, in the agency uh, off on some of our staff who've been running that. And I've been able to really go deep on helping to rebuild the marketing, the messaging, the branding of this company. And this video in particular is going to walk you through the strategy that I built. And the following subsequent videos are actually going to deep dive into each one of these over the shoulder and show you how I'm going through and executing each one of these. So let's just start by looking at the product key down here. So the key have this color coded here. Anything in this teal color blue is me. I'm going to be handling that myself. Anything in the green here is going to be me with another person working together on something because sometimes uh, you need to work as a team. Uh, anything in red is going to be our designer. Anything in orange is going to be a web developer. Purple is a content writer. This bright blue color is an SDR. It's a sales development representative, a salesperson. And then anything in gray, these are two positions that uh, we're kind of using some freelance contractors for and we're also looking to hire, so they're not quite done yet. But point being is uh, I wanted to show you how this marketing strategy flows uh, and again, what you can expect from the coming video. So the first thing, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is get my big ass head out the way <clears throat> and just move it up here. So the first thing that I wanted to start working on with this company was the messaging and the website design. This is something that people always ask me where to get started with marketing. They want to go into SEO or like link building uh, or advertising. You got to get the foundation of the house right before you start putting additions on and, and revamping the whole thing. So the thing that I started with was messaging. This company, uh, Coding is for Losers, what we sell uh, is a couple of things. Number one, is we sell consulting services around data pipelines, uh, analytics services. We basically help companies, agencies, e-commerce companies automate their data flows, meaning you're using Google Analytics, Search Console, uh, Screaming Frog, Facebook ads, all this data operates in a silo. There's some tools out there that can help you aggregate it, but it's very clunky. Um, it's expensive and you still need a data analyst to run that reporting, right? So it's expensive for your company. It's also very slow. So what we do is we build what's called a data pipeline. We pipe all that data into a database called Google BigQuery, and then we're able to build custom reports to visualize that. So for example, uh, like a monthly SEO report or an all-in-one traffic ads report. So if you're running YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook ads, we can get all that data in one place and build one report where you can see all that. So it's a very, very impactful service, but it's also difficult for customers to really fully comprehend what we do because there's so much technical aspects to it that they can get kind of lost in the sauce, if you will. So messaging here is so important. We need to be able to communicate what we do, the value of it, the benefits of it very quick, or we've lost the people. So I've spent a large majority of my time over the past couple of months working on the messaging. So you can see here, that was the first thing that I started with here in blue back in March. In reality, this has been uh, really, I just kind of got through it this week in terms of wrapping up the messaging for it because we went through a couple iterations of the website design, which we'll talk about in the coming video. Uh, and when I first started, I actually had it positioned the wrong way. I was going more towards the Google Sheets stuff, like Google Sheets automations, uh, like conditional formatting, formula stuff like that, because that's a lot of the content that David had. So I was reading a lot of that as uh, the type of content and the type of audience that we wanted to sell to, when in reality, it was more needed to be built more towards marketers. It needed to be uh, spelled out and communicated much differently. I really can't stress the importance of this enough. Whenever you're working with a client or a new website, look at the messaging first. And it's not something you're gonna get overnight. Sometimes, like I said, it's iterative. You need to build on it over time. The deeper you get into other things, the more you can understand how the product and service should be messaged properly. So 
Uh, that's what uh, I started off with. After that, uh, we went into building a new UX for the website. Again, this was uh, both myself and a designer working together. I'm gonna show you that flow, how we do it in the next video. Again, I'm gonna cover all this in very deep detail. I'm just gonna kind of give you the overview in this video. After that, going into a new, new UI, this is a designer that we have on staff now. We hired him off of Behance. I just went on Behance and I was searching for different uh, kind of UI styles that I liked, hired him, and now we're working together in Figma to get these things done. Uh, so it needed a new UX in terms of the flow, a new UI in terms of the look and overall feel of the brand, uh, new page types that didn't exist before. Because again, the way that David had the website positioned, uh, I realized we needed to take it in a different different direction if we wanted to get this business to where we wanted to go. Uh, so then new page types and new conversion flow. That's really important. I'm going to talk a lot about that in the coming video. So uh, after that, we're going to flow into website development. So the website was on, I don't even know what platform it was on before, but I just wanted to get it on WordPress because uh, the way that we operate and when it's a smaller website like this, a service-based website, WordPress is cool, it's agile, um, developers are cheap, designers are easy to understand. A lot of people work in WordPress and it's easy for us to get some of these freelancers to come in, uh, you know, maybe work on copy, rewrite page titles, things like that. It's very easy to do in WordPress. So I wanted to move it over to WordPress and then also work on syncing it with Podia, which is a training platform that we use because again, uh, I'll talk about this more in the coming videos, but when you have a very complicated service or product, you need a lot of content, you need a lot of education for that person to maybe make the decision about becoming a customer. So we built a um, you know little mini training platform that helps people understand these concepts, but also put them into use contextually, which is really, really important. Again, that ties into messaging uh, for getting people to understand contextually how they can use and benefit from the service and software the more education, the more content that we have also behind a gated um, email uh, that allows us to then capture their contact and market them later in the future. So that development was about a five week sprint. Uh, it always takes a little bit longer than possible. And we're actually still in a lot of these things right now. You know, I could even drag these things out a little bit further. Again, this is kind of the initial plan. And then uh, it's like the, the memes you see on Instagram, expectations versus reality, <laughs> expectations, and then times this by two for reality, right? Um, but these things often take time again because it doesn't get perfect on the first crack around. You've often got to iterate on that. I'm going to talk about that a lot when we talk about the website design, the UX. It's an iterative process. It's not one and done. This is why we employ designers in house and we don't use agencies because we want to constantly be working on these things and then applying the feedback loop that we get from customers throughout the sales process, uh, throughout customer support. We're feeding that back into the look, the feel, the layout, and the functionality and the messaging of the website. It's something that we're constantly working on. After that, uh, content is, is an incredibly important part of this. I mentioned before that because this is such a complicated service for people to understand as a marketer, maybe not as a developer, it's, it's complicated for marketers to understand um, all the moving parts that go into this. Again, content is so important, not just for attraction, but also for nurturing people, getting them to understand once they're on the website, how can we get them to understand what we do, understand the benefits, understand the use cases, and then of course, eventually convert into being a lead. And it's not done there too. Once they become a lead, we also wanna send them information like case studies. Um, again, that might relate to their business line that they can again see the value and not just become a lead, but then also become a customer. So that really starts with competitive research. Uh, again, I've got a really good video plan for how we do the keyword research, the competitive research, the content research, and it all starts with understanding what the market looks like. Because again, the, the first website that I was working with with David, his first iteration of it was more of a blog than a service-based website. So the content he was writing about didn't necessarily map to the type of content that we needed to produce. So when I first got started, again, looking at that messaging, I couldn't fully understand. I was basically pushing it the wrong way, which again, I'll talk about and I'll talk about how I overcame that. I found the right competitors. And then once you know what the right competitors are from a marketing point of view, then you can start to uh, idealize, idealize and strategize the content that you want to build. So after that, I uh, did a very deep content on it because David does a really good job with building content. And uh, I had to go through and again, make sure that it was written properly, formatted properly, not written properly because he's a great writer, but uh, again, written in the messaging style that we need to attract the customers that we're trying to reach. So I went through, did an entire content audit, and then I went through and also did content updates. This is really important. Content updates are really important too. I love that. Look at, I feel like a sportscaster up here. Oh, it disappeared. Anyways, uh, content updates are really important too because it's not just enough to go through a content audit. We also want to make sure that we're going through and we're updating with like page titles, uh, you know, updated content in terms of the body text, uh, media. That was another thing uh, is adding media, getting a designer in to help us design up some graphics. So I'll show you the before and after what the site looked like before and then after in terms of the content. Keyword gap analysis. Um, 
So again, these were all me up here, all in blue. Um, you know, I usually like to get some sort of uh, contract supporting to help me out, but uh, some things you just got to do on your own. And uh, I handled these things on my own. After that, the keyword gap analysis. So this is a, a combination of me and one of our offshore uh, folks who basically run this keyword gap analysis. So what it does is we built a tool that pulls in five competitors, right? So identifying the competitors up here, I can put them into this tool. It's actually this tool here. But we put it into the tool and then it shows us the keywords that they're ranking for versus the gaps versus in, in other words the keywords that we are not currently ranked for so i'm able to look at the gaps between what our competitors have and what we currently have and then from there what i can do is i can start to ideate content topics so when i say content topics too it's not just about blogs it's about videos it's about social posts um, you know things we might be able to push on linkedin all that stuff we ideate in here. I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. And then after that, we push this out for uh, a writer. We outsource all of our writing creation at this point. We'll edit it in house. We'll do the videos in house. Uh, I'll talk more about that content flow that we have. And you can see this just uh, basically pushes out uh, throughout the three month sprint. And again, three months is, is being very gracious here because we're constantly working on the business. But this is really just to get kind of uh, the whole strategy implemented. And after you get the whole strategy implemented, it then becomes uh, a launch and learn, which I'll talk about in a second right here. So after that, uh, and again, these are cascading in the order that I want to get them done. Again, we only have so many time, so much time in the day. Um, we don't want to deploy a full team on this quite yet because we have two other companies that are are running and growing really well. This is just kind of in the beginning phases. We're also, like I said, we're building software to help automate this service, uh, which I'll talk about throughout this, which we're spending quite a bit of money on. So we're, we're trying to leverage um, as much of a growth hacked approach to this as possible. And again, when you have the knowledge and resources and talent in house, which you now will after this, you can do these things on your own. Um, you know, I, I'm going through the process of renovating a house. I feel like I've been giving this analogy too much, so I apologize if you heard it before, but I'm going through the process of renovating a house. And uh, it's very similar to the marketing and, and business building process because you can go out and hire a contractor. It's like the equivalent of going out and hiring an agency or a person. And uh, they've got their way of doing things. They've got their opinion. It's also just going to cost you more because you're paying the premium for all that different stuff. Whereas there's certain things, if you know what you're doing, that you can do yourself. Like, I don't need someone to rip up my floors. It'll, it'll take me a Sunday afternoon to do that. I can do that on my own. I'm not going to pay 15 grand for that. Um, it's the same thing with this. There's certain things you can see that I'm doing because I know that I can get it done for faster, cheaper, and better. Uh, and there's certain things that I need help with. And there's certain things that we just want to let other people do. So it's important to know uh, those things that you can do in-house versus you know using a contractor, an agency, or freelancer, or, or an in-house hire, which I'm going to talk about throughout this video series. So the next thing up is email marketing. So as I said, we uh, synced up with our training platform that allowed us to basically gate some of our content behind email. So we do want to make sure that we have a nurturing and conversion flow to turn those people from free converters into um, paying customers or marketing qualified leads. I'll talk about uh, the content that we're using to do so. I'll talk about the email flows. And then we've also got a Slack group that we use. We're very big on community. We're very big on nurturing. Uh, we're very big on the fact that we want to use as much content and community and education before somebody becomes a lead because we're really trying to reduce the onus on our sales team to not have to get on there and educate the people about what it is that we do and what we offer and the benefits. We want to use our marketing to do all that. And then once they get on that consultation call with David, they are basically just want to know about how we can take this and apply it to their business. They know about the cost. They know about the process. Uh, they're very well educated. It saves us a lot of time because us getting on a sales call takes an hour of our day versus if we can just automatically push them into this nurturing flow, they're going to do go through a lot of that process themselves. And then launch and learn. This is a very important concept that I, that I use throughout all of our marketing is that marketing is iterative. It's not one and done. There's certain things that like email, like design, um, like content that we want to launch and then learn from it and then make changes. So again, these things are only here for a couple of weeks, but a lot of the times I'm going back in and, you know, checking out email here, checking out email here, checking out email here. And these aren't necessarily things that I document. That's just kind of more of my, you know, standard day to day. Um, but again, these things are, these are things that require time and require revisiting after they've been launched. So don't sit on these things for too long. Just try and get them done and then, you know, make them as good as possible as you can, but get them out in the market, see how people react, and then go back and, and, and implement that feedback loop to make sure things are getting better. So after email, uh, we're going to start pushing into Facebook ads. I'm going to do this all myself. We're actually looking at maybe hiring a traffic manager, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. 
So you can see these things are all on me, the creative strategy, the ad setup, the ad optimization. I do it for all of our companies right now. It's, it's not overly difficult. It's a skill set that I have. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna strategize these ads, um, get them live, and then over the shoulder of me setting them up as well. And then sales. Uh, sales is a huge part of this company and where we're going. All of our companies now are moving from really starting to understand as I grow in my career and my, uh, you know, these companies that the marriage between marketing and sales is incredibly important. I've always hedged overly for, for marketing, but now realizing that sales is just as important, if not more important than marketing, because, uh, you know, if I can get somebody on the phone, it's a completely different ballgame than letting somebody browse your website on your own and kind of trickling in on their own. So we want to marry those two things together. And it starts with uh, a UVP flush out, which means what is our unique value proposition? What is our selling position? Why is it that people should use us? So that ties in directly with messaging. It ties in directly with a website. These two things between website redesign uh, and sales actually go together more than anything because we want to make sure that our messaging is staying congruent from our marketing into our sales and then pushing into our sales deck. So we're in the process right now of having our designer basically take, um, I built a straw man deck, basically did like the outline for it and then have our uh, uh, designer go in. I actually talk about this in depth in the blueprint sales module. It's the same thing that we use for the agency. It's the same thing that I use with the blueprint. We build a very good deck that has all the company information, case studies, um, examples of reports that we've built that we can then use in the background during a sales call to make sure that we're staying on track and staying focused and ultimately driving towards that sale. Uh, the sales script just ties in directly with that. I actually just worked on this yesterday. I can share it with you guys. The initial sales script that I worked on that ties into the deck. I'm usually just using notes in the bottom of it, but it has the specific questions that we want to ask. It has the goals of each one of the slides to get out, um, you know, the types of leading questions that we want to ask the whole nine yards, because ultimately what we want to do is build an outbound sales strategy that we can get somebody, a junior person in house for, uh, who can do the outbound, handle the, basically the, the qualification calls, get them committed, potentially even getting them to, you know, pay 500 bucks to reserve their spot. And then David comes in and that call is not so much the sales call. It's more of kind of like an onboarding call, right? Where uh, they were just waiting, we're waiting on the sign a final contract and pay, pay the full amount, but we've got them bought into the point where it's worth David or my time to get on the call with them. Uh, and review the the work that we want to do with them. So then uh, the launch outbound, you can see here too, this is just this bright blue here. This is uh, reserved for an SDR that we want to hire hopefully in the near future. And then just kind of the launch and learn things on on the roadmap after that are going to be hot jar setup. So click tracking, heat maps, really, really important if we want to test and optimize the performance of the website, YouTube ads, LinkedIn ads, Twitter ads, right? But these are all things down here that are kind of like nice to have. Uh, once we get through this. So you can see how this is quite a bit of work, but this is the core element. Again, this is the foundation to me of this business. This is the foundation of pretty much uh, any much B2B business at this point. It's messaging. It's beautiful website design and experience that helps to educate and inform the person. So it will take the onus off our sales team to have those kind of like very aggressive, like, does that sound like something you'd be interesting type sales calls and to have it much be more like they know what they want. They know what we do. Uh, they know the pricing. How can we just take what we're offering and how can we sell them on how we can apply to their business, right? As opposed to having to go through on a sales call and spend 30 minutes educating them on the product and then have them be like, okay, well, let's go back and think about it. We want them to have already thought about it. And on the sales call, it's an actual sales call. So incredibly important for any B2B, any sales process to use marketing to educate the person, especially when it's a more complicated service like this. Website development, very straightforward. Content. Uh, you know, the email nurturing and advertising, right? Like we want to have a traffic source. And what you'll notice too, is I don't have anything on here about SEO because SEO will pick up if I do these things right. Um, for example, if I build the right content, the right experience, and then after that down here, what I probably should put in here actually is link outreach. So again, you guys kind of see us as the SEO folks, which is cool, but our priority is never SEO. I never go into a new business being like, I have to rank for this keyword. It's not a good idea, number one, because you just don't know if you can. Uh, and number two, it just takes too long. Like, why would I sit around and wait for a year for my business to grow? Like, there's things that you can do right now that can launch your business incredibly quickly uh, and profitably and without having to wait. And this is what I'm going to talk about throughout this video series. So uh, make sure if you guys haven't already that you like and subscribe so you can get these future videos. I'm going to be releasing them hopefully every week. And as I go through this again, 
I'm going to be going through pretty much each one of these buckets here in detail and showing you over the shoulder how I'm doing uh, messaging, how I'm doing the UX. I'm going to show you the actual website designs that we have uh, and how we're communicating with developers, the content strategy. Everything is going to be over the shoulder, literally showing you how I'm building this thing uh, as we go. This is, uh, as I like to say, a marketing strategy in a box, especially for a B2B. So again, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you leave me a comment as long as it's not about my haircut. And... Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.